Hi everybody. I was lucky enough to get my hands on this RTX 3080 OC gaming edition and I thought I'd throw together a very quick video uh, taking you through some benchmarks that I've done since getting the card. So I appreciate that not everybody will be interested at in all the parts so I'm going to put some timestamps up here and you just jump to the section you're interested in. Ultimately my focus will be uh, car games and VR. Okay, so I won't do a proper unboxing, um, but basically here's the card. It's the Gigabyte Gaming OC Edition. I was lucky enough to get this uh, when stock level was very low. And um, yeah, it's a slightly ugly card, but to be honest, I don't really mind too much. It's about the performance that I care about. So you can see here the new Gigabyte uh, RTX 3080 next to my old Zeus uh, 1080 Ti Strix model. Um, typically, actually, they're, they're not too far off size wise. I think my old 1080 Ti was quite a beast, quite a big card. Um, I'll just flash up the rest of my spec for anybody that's interested, but we're basically using a Ryzen 7 3700X, 16 gig of RAM at 3000 megahertz, GTX 1080 Ti, and the RTX 3080. So I fit it in the uh, case that I've got which is quite small it's quite a big beast and then just got it running uh, it's got quite a cool little LED display on the side of it which is cool uh, it also features a dual BIOS so you can actually run it in a quiet mode or an OC mode okay so let's just jump straight into some benchmarks so the first uh, game that we're going to be looking at is Forza Horizon 4 and we're going to start with a 1080p comparison and then a 4k comparison. You may be wondering why am I even looking at Forza Horizon 4? Well the main reason is because it's actually got a benchmark mode which means that you can run it completely the same each time and it's a true back-to-back -back benchmark test. So let's just see how the 1080p does. Okay, so interesting. Uh, we obviously know that at lower resolutions, the CPU is going to matter a lot. And this is kind of what we saw here. Uh, it only managed 44 frames per second on the 1080 Ti. Um, but let's have a look to see how much more the RTX 3080 did. So it did a solid 60. Um, it actually reached a max of 201 frames. But I think the true test will actually be, let's see how this performs in 4K.
So yeah, the GTX 1080 Ti definitely was struggling there at 4K. Uh, it was averaging about 28 frames per second. It hit a minimum of 24, a maximum of 39. Overall, it was struggling. Then if we look at the RTX 3080, what you actually see here is it did pretty well. It ultimately did a locked 60 FPS, but managed a maximum of 125 and actually a minimum of 93. Um, which for 4K is pretty incredible. Okay, so let's move on to some eye racing. Um, we'll start with 1080p since I don't have triple screens. Um, but to really push it, I'll add all the graphical settings on. So you can see here, I'm just adding absolutely everything pretty much. Um, now, I'm not actually expecting a huge amount of difference here because eye racing is known to be so CPU bound that I think it won't really get a lot of benefit from the graphics card. But let's just see what we find. Okay, so here we've got the GTX 1080 Ti on a replay at the Nürburgring. Pick the Nürburgring because it's a terrible track for performance. And if you look to the right, we're getting about 90 to 110 frames per second. But if you look on the left, the GPU utilization is really low, uh, which actually means that most of this performance is being limited by the CPU, not the GPU. Okay, so just onto the RTX 3080, the saturation has changed. Uh, that was just because of the way I recorded it. We're seeing only about maybe 10 frames extra, uh, and that's because it's CPU bound rather than GPU bound. It's because we're running 1080p with max settings. Ultimately, if you're using triple screens, which I don't have, I think you'd see a much bigger gain here. Equally, uh, if you're using VR, I think you'd see a much bigger gain. Just like we saw with Forza Horizon 4, the GPU does a lot better at rendering a lot more pixels. So with that in mind, let's jump into some VR comparisons instead. Okay, so on the top left, we've got the GTX 1080 Ti. Um, this is obviously in VR, but we're kind of using similar settings to what we just saw in the last thing. I think it does down tune a couple of bits just because it's VR. It doesn't do AA, I think, for example. Um, the saturation, just ignore it because, as I said, it's just the filter I had left on OBS, so nothing to do with this test. Uh, we're doing this test at Nürburgring because that is probably the hardest uh, track on terms of CPU and GPU. It always dips, always in VR, I get stutters. Uh, and then right next to that, in the middle, we got the RTX 3080, once again, and uh, VR, same settings, and then right to the right, we've actually got it slightly lower settings, high and mid, just to see if we can maintain 90 the whole way through.
Right. So to me, that was really interesting. The GTX 1080 Ti, it struggled to really maintain 90 FPS that much. Uh, most of the time it's kind of down at the 45 where reprojection was happening. The middle one, um, it was doing better. It didn't go down as hard or as much. Um, but the one on the right stayed pretty much locked 90 the whole time. What you'll have noticed is we've got grandstand switched on. We've got crowds. We've got basically all the things that you want to see when you're racing around is switched on. Um, in the old days to get 90, I'd have everything switched off. So it'd look really, really bland. Um, so yeah, great stuff. One thing just to remember, obviously this is a Nürburgring. It's probably the worst one. Uh, on other tracks, it would be a lot better. The other thing as well is that uh, NVIDIA have actually got some things like um, DLSS, which could actually improve frame rates considerably uh, when you're talking about higher resolutions. And um, yeah, it's only a matter of time before that gets implemented by the iRacing team to make it even better. Okay, so let's have a look at Elite Dangerous in VR. Um, on the left, I've got the GTX 1080 Ti with VR Ultra settings. Uh, in the middle, we got the RTX 3080 with VR Ultra settings. And on the right, we've got it with VR High settings. Now, I must admit, this isn't a particularly great test because obviously I can't make each ship do the exact same thing. There's no replay or anything like that. So it's going to vary based on that. I'd also say, don't forget, we're recording, which is going to add some load. And ultimately, um, uh, I think I could have done another test, which was on VR Medium or something like that, to see what that did as well. So first of all, sorry for my terrible flying. It's been a long time since I've played uh, and I was a bit rusty. Um, I think it's still a bit inconclusive with this. Uh, you can see that the high settings definitely uh, could maintain 90 a bit more than the others. Uh, the GTX 1080 never left 45, I believe. And I suspect if you know Elite Dangerous and how to optimize it a bit better, you could get a lot more performance out of this. Um, as I say, I haven't really played for quite a while. I might even have some super sampling left on somewhere uh, that I didn't even realize that's perhaps uh, affecting it even more. Um, so I'm sorry that this isn't that conclusive. Hopefully somebody else will cover it. I think the key takeaway is that there's certainly improvement in VR performance with the RTX 3080. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, this is definitely an upgrade over the GTX 1080 Ti I had, especially in VR. Um, don't shoot me or dislike the video if this isn't particularly in depth. I kind of put this video together very, very quickly. If you want more covered, definitely uh, leave a comment and I'll try to get another video together. Um, I think DLSS, when that's actually implemented in more titles, will really improve things. So for anybody who doesn't know, DLSS basically allows the game to upscale. Uh, it's almost like super sampling, but it uses machine learning and AI to do it for you. Uh, the end result is massively improved uh, resolution with barely any performance hit and actually better clarity than the native resolution. So if they ever do that in VR, that's gonna be absolutely huge. Um, don't forget as well, some of these games aren't really optimized for the new card yet or any of the features. I might even be running old firmware. The drivers are pretty new. So things are definitely gonna improve from here. Uh, I'd also say that just generally, some of my tests were maybe a little bit wonky. Uh, I think when people really get under the hood of how to optimize things better, you'll, you'll get a lot more there. 
So in conclusion, if you can get your hands on one, definitely get an RTX 3080. Um, if you're lucky, get an RTX 3090. Uh, and ultimately there is rumors of a 20 gig version of the 80 coming along soon. Um, I think it's a good step up uh, and I'm really looking forward to the future when things are optimized a bit more. So if you found this video useful, uh, please give it a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe. Thanks everybody, I'll catch you next time. Bye.